trying not to get in your way. tires off the ground. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back around, pull all the lugs, and we're going to pull the tire off. Now we have room to access um, to cage the brake. So let me go get the caging bolts and we will start the cage process. So hold on.
All right, so to cage, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pry this dust cover off. And these are really brittle. I'm gonna have to get new ones of these. Um, so if you can see this, I put a little anisees on these threads. You know, they're under a lot of pressure. I've been gonna be using them a lot. Put a little anisees on there. So cage, go in, find the slot. Maybe, maybe thin. there in the slot, rotate 45. I showed in my other video how to put the line in the mark. That was to help you out. Um, you do, 50 of these and you just feel it. You just know it's there. It's hard to explain, but it's not. And we're in, we're seated. And then what I do is I take my 19. The anesthesia makes a huge difference when you do this. You can feel the difference. And each stroke is equal. The ana you can feel it. The anesthesia helps you. And then you know you can feel when it bottoms out. We're getting close. I can feel it right there. And we're bottomed. All right. I'm not going to show the next side, but I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. And what we're doing is we're taking the pressure off of the pads and taking the park brake off so that we can slide this drum back. So hang on a minute. All right, so remember, if you screw a little WD up here and it will roll around, but sparingly. If you do it sparingly, it will just soak into the rusty bits and it won't actually drip down into your shoes. You don't want to saturate your shoes with this. Now, what we need to do is slide this rusty drum off, right? So in order to like break the rust free and loose, I use an impact hammer. All I'm doing is adding vibrations to vibrate the rusty stuck loose. And it's flat. It's not damaging anything. All right, I think it's finally moving. Getting too old for this. About 30 minutes in, just like the other side. There. Um might have a better way that's fine um, let me just touch on this so your wheel when you put all this back together you need to clean this mating surface off and you need to clean the mating surface off on your rim um, if you had all this flaking paint and put your rim on and the flaking paint were to disintegrate in between you could lose torque so I always wire wheel and clean these mating surfaces off. I may try to put a little bit of black spray paint on there, rust, but it's pretty cool now. Um, I also wire cup the inside of the rim so that when I go on, I have a flat mating surface. Um, I think that's kind of important. But you know you got your brakes released when the hook comes off. Hurt yourself like I'm fixing to.
Okay, quick FYI, you can see I got the mating surface cleaned. I actually use one of these paint stripping wheels on my um, DeWalt drill, high speed, and it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go get the black spray paint, but this is the type of flat level surface you really need your rim to stick to. And I'm gonna do the same process in the inside of the wheel that mates to this drum. Um, it's just good business to do it this way. So, all right, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so we're all cleaned up. I actually painted the surface of the rim um, ahead of schedule to give it an opportunity to dry. It's in the sun. Each one of these three lines um, we need to remove. Mark them, okay? I marked them with a Sharpie even though I can tell they're like in sequence, but just mark them, it just makes it easier. Okay. I don't have a spanner that will fit this, and if I can barely get this off with a 24 inch torque wrench, man, a spanner, you gotta have a beefy one. I don't have one. What we're gonna do is, number one, we are gonna mark our orientation and then we are going to loose this if we can. I struggled last time. Make a little room. Ah, I mean I am giving it full crank. These things like lock in place. Ah, holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. That's what I just used. There is no way a spanner. Ah, I still can't. There we go. Holy mackerel. There. That is crazy. Okay. Now, I'm gonna zoom over here a little. Now, when you go to unscrew this, these are sticking up too far and they're gonna hit your axle. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take these off. I'm using a 13 16 by the way. I think that's just thread dope, pipe dope. And then this one as well, right? Ah, oh, this one, oops, sorry. This one's a lot easier, I think. Okay, so this is what we have, right? Now, I'm gonna take this little pipe wrench and we are gonna grab this nose without hitting the threads. And we are gonna, of course, hit it with the hand. There she goes.
Now when you get so far, don't be a dummy like I did the first time. You gotta support the back of it because it weights down and it just plops right out onto the ground. Okay, you got a casing bolt. Mine fell on the casing bolt and it could become a rocket. So we do this. And it's there and she's off. We pull it straight out and you can see the wedge and spring. We're just gonna leave that in there. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna reposition to the shop. So hold on a minute. Okay, so we're on the bench, right? There's your caged pot. This is just a Harbor Freight press. And then I have the two small holes here. And basically all we're gonna do is face it towards us. We're gonna center it. And we're gonna put it in just like this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this over the caged bolt. And because it sticks out a little bit, we add this. And then we are gonna center right on the ram. It's, it's a little wobbly, but it's okay. And then we are gonna shut our valve to the press pump. And then look at, I'm just using my hand on this. I'm not using the rod. Just using my hand. And that's it. I mean, I'm just touched. I'm not, I don't have hardly any pressure on there. So now, with this on, it's not going to spring off and get me. Number two, it's caged. Number three, I still have the safety ears. So I'm safe. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these. Nine sixteenths. There's a lot of pain on them. Some lubricant. And this gun, this is the little three it's gun. We just need a little bit of lube. And let's preen this one this time. Smarter, not harder, right? See, I'm so loose that I actually lost tension, so I want to add the tension back. So now, before you pull this off, maybe a little earlier, you can just tell it's not going anywhere. It's, it's fine. And then we're going to remove our clamps. There's both of our clamps. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to release pressure on the jack. And it's going to raise up. We're going to remove this. We're going to remove this. And then now, notice these ears, okay? This won't pull off because the ears hit, see? This has to slide back. Slide that back, and here's our rubber. And then there's our caged. You can see our caging bolt is perfectly engaged. Look at all the dirt. We're going to clean all that out. Don't worry about that. And I'm going to set this down on the floor. And here's our diaphragm. And I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, this does have some cracking, but it's not all the way through. But this was leaking like a sieve, like most of the other ones. You can see the large cracking in there. And these are arch. What are these? Arch. 
Oh, and Chor and Chorlock. And Chorlock. Brand. And I'm trying to look for a number. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's a 16 right there. And Chorlock. G9. And then a 16. So these are type 16s. And you can see this brand has the ridges in the lip. Um, unlike the hall decks, which were smooth and didn't seal for me. You can see the ridges in these. I don't know why this one is leaking though. It is not that bad. I think it's leaking from the edge seal. So let me go ahead and source the new one and I'm gonna show you how to reassemble with the new one. So hang tight. So yeah, you can put this end in first. And you can see, get the ears on. Oh, that was, that was a lot easier. And then I square my ears up with the valving. And then here's where you have the opportunity to square everything up. If this is on the truck, this is gravity is making this drop and you're fighting it because you're always pushing this up. Here, I can sit here and center all three of these and I can feel it. I can feel it. And what we're going to do next is, well, the first thing I'm going to do is grab my socket. I got. Get rid of this old one. Okay, so centered bottom, centered top. No, the back one needs to come a little more forward. There. And then we're going to put this on. And we're going to put this on and we're going to center this. Okay, so now we're going to come back. We are going to come back just hand tight again, remember? Just, I'm going to push this back a little. I'm just doing this by hand. And I just have a little squish on the rubber. Now this is where you check that your lip is good. And my lip feels good all the way around. I have equal amounts of rubber all the way around. And that feels good. Clamps are clean. No debris. Check both of them. Check these surfaces. No major dust. I mean, look, everything gets dusty, but no major mud clots on there. And then, now that you have this pressured together just enough, these clamps, they just fit right on. If this is, it's quarter inch higher because the internal spring can't compress enough, you're fighting to get this clamp on. I'm not fighting at all to get this clamp on because I have it squoze just enough to where the clamp fits dead on. I mean, there's my clamp, but just stand by because there's something else that I'm going to show you on this clamp. Um, now, there are people that are going to tell you put the bolts in this way because gravity holds them down. They would be absolutely right. But gravity doesn't affect me because I'm doing this on the bench. And I'm going to get a little lube. That's a dry lube. And then we're gonna put this on. And it's okay. And then we are gonna get this on. Now this is, this is I think a key trick. What you're gonna do is tighten this up just enough Take the slack out of the bolt. That's it. It's not tight, tight, right? Now, 
Now, matter of fact, I'm going to loosen this one a nugget and tighten this one a nugget. So they're relatively, relatively equal. Maybe a little less off. See, they're loose. Okay. I'm going to try to explain this. I mean, you might get it. You might not. I don't think it's rocket science. Okay. If I tighten this clamp, what seems to happen is this will tighten, but it's not pulling the center down in. It just stretches it sideways, and it doesn't tighten right. If I turn this, push those together a little. If I turn this, here, let me reposition. Okay, so now I'm on the bottom clamp, and if I put this up here, Shut my cylinder. Center it. Now, hold on, it's a juggling act, I know. But if you can see, and I don't know if the camera can see or not, the gap down here, see it go smaller and smaller and smaller? Just barely hand tight. What I'm doing is I'm squeezing the center so that when I tighten the outer, um, I have equal force all the way around in a circle. Now, one of the members suggested hitting it with a hammer. Exactly right, because when you hit it in a hammer, you're adding tension to the center part of the band. That's where the bolts just seem to want to add tension to the two ends. So I'm holding just, I mean, just barely hand tight. I mean, you can see it still moves. But I bottomed the clamp out so that when I tighten these, it's equal tight all the way around. That was a game changer, I'm pretty sure. So now we just come in here. and we try to get them equal. It's all right, we, our clamp is still bottomed out. And I mean, if you notice, the clamp is bottomed out. And we're not touching. And this is exactly the way all the other ones are. But when I did the first one, these actually, I think, bent a little and touched because I couldn't pull equal force down on the side. I was just pulling down on the ends. And if you look, we're, we're nice and clamped. Now, here's, here's what I want to show you. Look at this side. If you can see how we're not touching, because this intersection is not the same diameter as the cap. Um, that's really weird to me, but it is what it is. Now, yes, this one, this one's not touching, this one is touching, but had I, had I had good center, right, they would have been about a sixteenth of an inch on all four sides equal. I don't think, because I have the extra gap here, um, that's an issue, but, um, that's how I changed um, and I got it to work. And now we're, we're on and we're good. Don't over tighten these, don't over clamp this, but clamping in the center of this I think is vital to get equal clamp. Just like as if you were starting to tighten these and you were hitting this with a hammer. You're pushing this down, it relieves pressure on the nut and the bolt so you can tighten it a little more, then you tap this again, you keep tapping, um, spot on to the member who said you got to tap it on with a hammer. I just did the same thing, but I just used my press because it's easier to align 
the actual rubber when it's vertical and gravity is not playing against you. All right, let's go put this back on the truck. All right, I want to touch on something real quick. All my mating services were clean. You don't need to see me wrangle the tire. I got the tire on and these are just zipped down. They're not zip tight. Just zip down to center the rim and the cone of the lug nut. Now, I do this with the park brake off because when I tighten this, I want the drum loose so that when I torque, the drum and everything is tucked in and seated. I don't know if it's a big deal, to be honest, but if your park brake was set and your drum wasn't seated all the way against the hub, would that cause an issue with the torquing of your lug nuts? Well, I don't know, but I'm not dealing with it. So park brake is off, um, zipped in to center, now that I'm centered, I know my drum is loose, so everything is sucked in, everything is on their clean mating surfaces, and then now we're gonna do this All right, here's another one, see if you can see it. I ran out of stroke. I'm like seriously crawling up the, the rail of this truck and standing on this thing. This is just crazy. Um, this one I'm going to try to sit on. I don't know if you can see. Okay, solid beat. This one is 412. I'm gonna try to zoom you out, sorry. And then I'll do one more. That one is, ooh, 483. Ouch. I don't know why that one went up so high. All right, so you get the idea. Um, we're gonna go ahead all the way around and torque all these. Um, the test was zero leaks, both rebuilds zero leaks first try using the method and the diaphragm from O'Reilly's that I showed you. Type 16s, even though it looks like it says type 18, it's like not printed good on the little sticker. But they're type 16s. Once all of these are torqued, we will come back and we will put up this put in the CTIS line. I know there's a lot of controversy should you use thread lube on your lugs or don't use thread lube. You can do whatever you want to do. This is what I use. Do or don't is up to you, but that's what I do. And, but I also, before I go more than 10 miles, I'm out here doing sample torque checks. I check my drive lines. This truck is turning into be a nut job part of my life, but I actually enjoy its time. So, all right, let me get the rest of these torqued. We're done. I hope you guys got some value out of this and um that's it have an amazing 2023 new year bye